First of all, could I please ask you to briefly introduce yourself and your institution? Okay, I'm Martin Knapp. I uh, work here at the London School of Economics and Political Science. And how would you explain what you do to a lay person? Well, uh, I'm a researcher. Uh, I lead a couple of research groups. Those research groups focus on social care, on mental health, on some prevention and public health topics. Uh, and what we do is get research funding from a variety of places, but quite a lot of it from government departments. And then we try to produce research which will be helpful to people making difficult decisions in long-term care, in mental health systems and elsewhere. What would you say are currently the three main policy priorities for long-term care in England? Um, one of the big challenges we've had for a long time is the overall structure, funding, organisation of social care, uh, particularly for adults. Uh, we have not had, uh, I think, a satisfactory national debate about how we organise uh, social care. Uh, particularly, we haven't had a national discussion or agreement about how we fund it. Uh, so I think number one priority is how to sort out particularly the funding of, of long-term care. The second one, I think, would be uh, how to best take forward the links across from the long-term care sector into the healthcare sector and elsewhere. So there's lots of discussion about integration with health and social care or better coordination. Uh, it's not just the health sector, but that's the one that particularly needs attention, I think. And the third one, I would say, is probably focusing on unpaid family carers, family and other carers, uh, because we rely on them enormously, as every other country does across the world. But I don't think our policy framework uh, and our support structures are adequate as they are delivered at the moment. And how do you think these policy priorities have changed in the past five years, if at all? Um, well, the first one on the funding of long-term care hasn't changed forever, almost. I mean, I think it's been a debate we, we have had some debate here but no government has uh, had the courage I would say to take the difficult decisions the, the decisions will be unpopular because they'll almost certainly require uh, either um, some new or additional taxation or some way of, of supporting uh, and meeting the needs of a rapidly growing aging population so I think um, we've had this, so th you know, things haven't changed in that context. I think the, in relation to the connections between long-term care and other sectors or systems, there's been a much more uh, transparent, much more informed debate in recent years, so that's good. We still haven't got things sorted, we're a long way from having them sorted out, but I think we have a better understanding of some of the challenges. In relation to unpaid carers, we, we do have in England um, carer strategy, a sort of policy framework. Um, I think the challenge that many people would say is that those are good words but they haven't turned into enough good actions yet. So yes, things are better than they have been five years ago, ten years ago in terms of our awareness but they're not yet particularly uh, seeing changes on the ground for people who are those carers. Mm -hmm. So if you have an opportunity to introduce one new long-term care policy in England, what would it be and why? I think it would have to be the funding. It's, it's not, as I've said, there are many, many challenges that we have. I just think that the funding um, vacuum we have, we, that, that a large proportion of the money that goes into uh, long-term care and a growing proportion is coming from individuals themselves paying for their care, paying for their family, um, and that may be quite appropriate, I don't know, but we haven't had enough of the national debate for that sort of discussion to uh, be carried on in a way that people can engage with because they understand the system. Most people in England do not understand how the long-term care system operates. So I think if we can get that funding debate going and then some actions and decisions, then many other things will follow from that. In terms of research priorities, what do you think is an outstanding piece of research on long-term care that needs to be carried out in England? Um, well, my facetious answer would be whatever I'm going to put in for funding next. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, I think there, are, there are a zillion things that need to be researched. Um, I think there are things that we don't need to do more work on. So, so take the unpaid carer uh, topic. 
I don't think we need to know any more about the responsibilities that carers carry, the burdens that they experience. We know that. What we don't necessarily know is how to address those um, negative consequences as well as positive consequences, how to support carers, how to help them to do what many of them want to do, which is to be a carer. So I think we need research on that. That's a big priority for me. Um, I don't think we need research on um, how much social care costs and who is bearing the cost, but we do need to understand what would happen if we introduced a new funding mechanism, so a new form of taxation, for example. We need to understand how people might respond to that and what, how it might change behaviour of, of individuals. So I think you know, around those big policy questions, there are loads and loads of research questions and um, my group and I are available for doing any research studies that you would like. <laughs> Thank you. So now I'm, I'm now going to ask you a few quick questions and I'm looking for a number in response from 1 to 10, where 1 is low and 10 is high. So firstly, what policy priority is allocated to long-term care in England? Um, on a grumpy day, I would say two. On a day like today in December when the news is dominated by Brexit, I would say one. Uh, I think in the slightly bigger picture, I would say around about four or five. I think we are having much more debate now about long-term care. It does get onto the front pages of the newspapers uh, in ways that perhaps it wouldn't have done in the past. So I'm pleased we're having a debate. We're just going to move from the debate to some decisions. And how aware is the general public in England of what the long-term care system offers to them? I would say a three. It's really don't, the people do not understand. They think social care is like health care and it's free at the point of use, which is the case for our National Health Service. Social care, long-term care is certainly not like that. So there's a long way to go to educate people. How well does the system support people with long-term care needs? Um, well, Compared to what we had 30 years ago, we're doing pretty well. Compared to what happens in many countries of the world, we're doing pretty well. Compared to our aspirations, we're not, so I would say a three. How well does the system support the needs of carers? I'd have to say a two there, I think. Uh, again, I think things are better uh, and awareness is greater, but as I said earlier, we haven't got the actions you know, translated from the rhetoric um, which will change people's lives. And how integrated are social care and healthcare services in England? Um, again, it's in, in the comparative sense, I might get criticised by my colleagues, I don't think we're too badly integrated. Um, I'm going to give it a four or five. I think it's not too bad. Again, it could be better, but it's not too bad. Thank you for your time. Thank you.